And have you ever wanted to be a team supporter, but not use void or status to do so? Well, do I have a build for you? Today we have a build focused solely on sunspots and how we can make these dingy little things a fireball to be reckoned with. There are many ways to build around sunspots and one popular way was to use Lawley Splendor and have a high resilience and discipline stat which would then lead to you getting a fast ability energy back and spending it on creating elemental wells. The other of course was to use Heart of Inmost Light and do the same thing but with the greater level of regen being provided. These are all okay but their support of use are quite limited with other players. However, there was a third option that does really well with Sunspots and that's Venus Cradle with his very strong ability to enhance regen speed and provide restoration while on the go. You see, with this build you can provide damage boost to allies, unlimited Sunspots, fast ability regen, restoration, unlimited elemental worlds, fast super build up and flexibility for hard content. This here is aimed for those who love to support and chill with those who need it most. Now if you are one of those people, then grab a pen and paper, take some notes, as I will show you what you need to do to become an ultimate team healer. But like always, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like, a sub and turn on notifications for more stuff like this in the future as it goes a long way for me. To start with the main basics of the class, we have two ways of building this setup. We can either focus solely into phone hammers which will give us unlimited stun spots and kills or we can rely on grenades with their high damage and safe usage. Both methods are good if you want to play a casual experience or end game experience depending on what you value the most. For the sake of today's build though, we will aim for a bit of both as this will allow you to use it wherever you go and not have to worry about having a core weakness appearing all the time. Now the best way to achieve a melee and grenade setup is to use the following which I believe is the best to operate with. We have Soul Invictus where our solar final blows and scorched targets create sunspots. Standing in them will improve your ability regen, give restoration and slow down super drain. We then have War and Flames which increases our solar ability damage up to times 3 stacks. It also allows our uncharged melee attack to deal solar and scorch. For Fragments we have Ember of Torches where Power Billy hits against targets makes you and allies radiant, Ember of Benevolence where applying Cure, Restoration or Radiant to allies grants increased grenade, melee and class ability region, Ember of Aperium which allows us to extend the duration of Restoration and Radiant effects via solar weapons or ability kills, and Ember of Ashes where you apply more Scorch stacks to targets. For stats we have 18 resilience, 16 discipline and 16 strength. Key mods to have are frontal wisdom for plus 50 intellect boost, melee wallmaker for creating elemental worlds via melee, rather rasputin where certain splash damage can create warmind cells, powerful wealth for times 2 elemental worlds created and world of life where destroying a cell will produce a wave of healing for you and allies. I had a thought that using fur and hammers were going to be the best choice to pick for simply getting our results easier in any sort of content. If we build up raw and flames damage, we can make both our melee and grenades more lethal against major targets, who in most cases would require something hard hitting to begin with. At the same time, we have brought in the use of warmind cells as a destructive nature and ability to heal allows us to heal our team even when they avoid our sunspots, which you will notice. This build overall makes its usage for endgame much more safer and viable compared to the traditional methods we are used to. For weapons, you're going to want a solar weapon that can either cause solar splash damage, scorch or just something that can build up your stats ability again. This means you have plenty to choose from depending on what piece of gear you can spare. And take my example of course which is the Polaris Lance Exotic Scout and my main primary weapon. Upon landing multiple critical hits, you can get back ammo and also create a solar sticky grenade to appear and detonate on targets which makes it great for both ad clearing and enemies DPS. If you manage to get the weapons catalyst complete then you can also get the firefly ability to proc which gives you an even easier time to create cells upon multi kills. Although I do have a heavy machine gun that can make cells on the fly, having the option to create them at a safe distance with a fantastic weapons such as this makes the build very strong for end game. Of course, as the incandescent perk is now a thing, you can save your exotic slot for something else if you wish. 
or better off, Sky Burners is a really great weapon to use now that can create sunspots even more easier. For Heavy, we have the 7th Seraph Saw Heavy Machine Gun with auto loading and full pull, and this will be helpful for arc shields, bosses, and creating warm cells on the go. I believe this role will be handy for the build when things get hectic, and you don't have time to keep swapping in and out and reloading your weapon all the time. With this combo, you could do a quick burst damage, stack it away, use something else, and then repeat as many times as you like. This will overall increase yours and your team's damage by quite a margin once you include your abilities in the mix, and from there you can easily supply the needed firepower then and there without much hassle. For the stats, as the stats are quite spread out, you do not need to focus heavily into maxing out stats for the best results. You can if you wish, but ultimately this will depend on what you can offer and what you can avoid just in case. If we take a resilience, for example at 18, this will be offering us a much higher damage reduction compared to if we had it at 50 instead. Now, depending on what you feel, you can siphon off some of the points here and use them elsewhere if you desire, but only if you notice a need to do so. You then also have to remember that we don't have much class ability regen mods on us, except for elemental wells. We do have absolution on hand, and we could add in distribution as well, but only if you feel that the build needs it. To be honest, class ability will passively regen quite fast, and without hassle, with elemental worlds on hand, so you may be able to get away with reducing it down another level, but still have good damage reduction in return. Discipline and strength are both at 60, which is a good breaking point to aim for. Depending on the setup and the environment you use this in, you may want to swap your midi wall maker and ordnance mod around if you plan to use one ability compared to another but do not reduce the stat down further and you're still going to be using them both in the same similar fashion. Once again, as we have elemental worlds at play, you don't need to worry about adding on additional mods to make both the two key stats viable. Do remember that because of the freedom of the abilities used, your subclass will be enhancing these two areas massively once in action, and from there, you then have your secondary weapon left open for you to pick and choose what perks you desire the most. This is a very user-friendly build design for those who want the bare minimum setup, but the best results in game. Left over wise, we have Harmonic Siphon times 2 for creating orbs of power via solar weapon. Machine Gun Scavenger for bonus reserve when picking up heavy. And Sundering Gleb for weakening effect at distance targets after multiple critical hits. As we have gone over the main basics of the list, we can now go over the overall idea as to what is generally happening. For head, we have resilience, harmonic siphon times two and from the wisdom mod. Arm, we have strength and melee one maker mod. Chest, we have intellect, thermal plating, concussive dampener, and rather rasputin mod. Leg, we have strength, heavy machine gun scavenger, innovation, and bound for well mod. Mark, we have mind resilience, sunder and glare, and fire team medic mod. The Phoenix Cradle are an amazing assorted to equip. If you ever play Titan Solar, and want to support via a different and non-traditional method. These have always been good if you learn sunspots to enhance yourselves, and the ability to share with others has only made it even more applicable in today's environment. Now, before they were popular, I remember many players used to say that they weren't worth the investments since there were better options of healing to go with, aka Well or Healing Rift Warlock. And while true, Warlocks do provide a good subclass support, Titans and Hunters can also be a good team support as well through their abilities and exotics. No more relying on just one class being the best support around, we now have room to explore the many opportunities that build crafters can cater to. So what exactly makes this build so special? Well firstly, Sun's boss are extended for you, so you can stay in them for longer and keep them going constantly while healing and giving you ability buffs. You then have wells and orbs of powers that can be produced a lot more than normal thanks to the fast ability and weapon gains involved. And then you have the warmind cells with one allowing you to create them via solar splash damage of any sorts, and another creating a wave of healing for all near it. And then on top of that you also get longer lasting super, and also constant damage buffs galore. Overall you get a build that pumps up healing and ability regen non-stop, for all users and keeps the flow of fighting going. But that's not all, the build can also achieve a times 2 restoration effect, which is something quite rare to see considering that Law Elite Titans used to be the best to offer this skill. After the nerf to the following exotic, 
a new alternative arrived, and thus Phoenix Cradle became quite popular overnight. If you want the restoration times 2 effect again, then this is probably the best way forward for it, and not only that, this could be useful for when creating a wide number of sunspots on demand there and then. The only issue with the setup is that of relying on the throne hammers for this in Grandmasters is not really possible. Your best bet is to use this build in Master and below, but if you plan to use this in GMs, then that's fine to do so, as you would just need to swap up the grenades being used, and also change up your weapons here and there, especially ones that can have incandescent built into it. But however you preserve it, the build allows players to utilize sunspots the way they should rightfully should be used, by sharing with others and keeping them well supported. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub and a share, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you date that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.